morning, everyone. We are headed to our Carl Sandburg home. Um, hey. Well, <laughs> temporary unavailable. Okay. Well, let me. No, okay. This seems to be a bug in this version. Okay, there we go. There seems to be a bug in this version to where I can't enable it. Like, as soon as I get onto the road, uh, it takes like a bit, like to warm up or something. I don't know. Like every single time I've gone out, it's done this. So, anyways, I uh, hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, I'm just going out for my standard loop around Hendersonville today. Uh, Onyx is with me, my co-pilot. You might see him in a mirror up there. Um, we're just going on a hike at Carl Sandburg home right here. Uh, so this is our standard test. Traditionally, the last like four versions, it's just zero disengagement every single time. We're gonna see what this gives. Um, we're starting to get to the point to where disengagements aren't really the primary metric to look at. Like it's starting to get zero disengagement so often that, like, okay, how smooth is it around turns? How often does it look for traffic? Does it stop appropriately? Does it change lanes appropriately? All this type of stuff. Does it turn on the blinker? There you go. Does it slow appropriately? Does it stay in the middle of the lanes appropriately? Does it maintain speed appropriately? Like all these different variables play a big role like this. I'm not this. I'm not obviously not pressing the accelerator. I don't know why it slowed down so much. It's like it because it has so much hesitancy. Um, I guess. So someone made a comment when it was this morning or yesterday on one of my other videos that it should wait. See, it doesn't turn the blinker on. It needs the blinker on. Okay. So what that comment said, this this car was actually on the on ramp behind me and accelerated around me because I was taking too long to get onto the highway and for some reason now it's braking here. So this on ramp has an issue to where it doesn't turn the blinker on. Uh, it needs to, right? Um, I don't think that's the correct way to merge onto a highway. At bare minimum, at least it should have the blinker on. Uh, you need to indicate you are getting on the highway, not just staying on the shoulder or something dumb like that. Or, I don't know, like, you need to indicate you are getting on the highway with your blinker. Uh, just not just like kind of swing on and wait till the last minute. So that's, that's what that person, that commenter was saying is you should just ride up the, the on-ramp all the way in. But there's so many on-ramps in the mountains here that are very short. You don't, they're just so, you don't have time to accelerate. You don't have time to wait until the end. If there's a lot of traffic, you just need to merge over. The issue is people on the highway don't get over in the left lane to allow you to merge onto the highway. And then that's what the urgent problem is. So it's a mix of, it's just human interaction. It's what's, what it's going to be. The correct way would be to do a zipper merge, what, what they were talking about. That's just not a realistic scenario though, because we're humans and we're, we're going to do it the way that makes us most comfortable, right? And, you know, having to change lanes when we don't want to, that's just what's going to happen. That's just human nature. And so the car has to be able to deal with that. And doing what's what's the best in the ideal scenario is not always the best in the realistic, real world scenario. Oh, that's why it slowed down. <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah, it always changes to the speed limit here and it slows down. I thought it was because of that trailer. He was crossing the, the white line on that trailer, like he's doing right there. He used to stay over. I'm not sure why he's to learn how to center the car, I guess, in the road. We're going to have a good test coming up here with these trucks, though, to make sure they it, it passes these trucks appropriately.
Okay, so we got an interesting scenario. We got a car coming up on my left. Um, okay. Cut off car coming up on my left. So that was a obvious disengagement because my car cut that car off. Right? It should have slowed down, let that car pass, and then get over. That would have been the appropriate move. But I didn't do that. So now, thanks to the voice commands, I can tell tell why I disengaged. I disengaged because it was going to cut that car off. So with the lane changes enabled like this, you get a lot more disengagements versus mainly doing it. The car needs to learn how to appropriately lane change and account for oncoming traffic. That is critically important. And also... Um, Need to speed up. See, if I was going 65, that probably would not have happened. But because I wasn't, that car was going 70 and I was going 60, it was catching up to me too quickly. Now let's see how it does right here passing this truck. Should we get over now? Hey, man, they're getting pretty good. Like, I can't tell you the amount of times where I'm like, yeah, I should get over right now. And then they're like, as soon as I say that, then it's getting over. Like, I it's either, again, listening to me, which I don't think so, or it's just, it's gotten so good, it's like, it's it's doing what I would do, like, in terms of, like, my thought process, and like, in terms of, like, what a safe amount of distance is, that's what it's doing, right? And, yeah, that that's great to see, That's this is the first version that's had so many of those events, it's really great to see. Now, we're about to get off the exit here, and... Traditionally, it would slow down a little bit too harshly. So we're gonna see if the slowdown is a little bit better getting off the exit. That's that's something that's really bugging me about getting off exits. It's just, it goes far too fast getting off the exit. It just needs to be smoother all the way down to the stop. It's already slowed down to the speed limit. This is what I've asked for, actually. Slow down to the speed limit right before the exit. But actually, it should be the speed, the speed limit until you are off the exit then it should be slowing down. But this is really good from my point of view. I saw nothing wrong with this. Besides, if I had to be extra picky, the speed limit, um, it should have... Well, that wasn't great. It, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that it did that. Um, but I was saying about the exit, the speed limit, the only, if I'm being extra picky, it should have stayed up in speed. I, until it got off the exit. It, sh it needs to not slow down on the highway. Okay, let's see how it handles this. Um, I, As you all know, if you've watched my videos, I do not like being in this lane for this intersection because it has to do a merge automatically afterwards car needs to be able to remember something, better map data, I don't know what it is. It just needs to know ahead of time that it should be in the left lane. Because it makes this scenario, it, it increases the risk for no necessary reason. And then you got this truck that's going to not pay attention. Okay, so this is going to be a disengagement. If this is not, I'm going to be fairly impressed. Okay. <laughs> It got lucky. That's the only reason it got lucky. The only reason, it didn't use this blinker either. Uh, but it's because those two cars were going into the grocery store there. It, it basically got lucky. If those two cars were going straight, it would have had an issue. Let's see how it does going over these rail, railroad tracks here. Uh, traditionally it goes too fast, but we do have a car that's going slow in front of us. So, and also traditionally it stays too far to the left. This seems a little bit further to the right, maybe, but we're gonna have to test this again uh, with it going faster without a car in front of us. See how it handles this right here. Pretty good. 
I did cut the corner a little bit sharp in my opinion, but I don't, I don't really see anything wrong with that. Um, it was smooth, that was the important part. Let's see how it does go into the 25 zone. Look, oh, this is a big change. It really slowed down. It, it would be going, the previous updates would be going 31, like, over the hip, crest of this hill. It would take forever to slow down, but this time immediately slow down. That's really good. It's annoying in a way because I don't, no one goes, you know, no one goes 25 in here. They, they go 30, 35. Um, but that, that, yeah, I'm pressing the accelerator. There's a car behind me. It, it shouldn't be stopping there. But, um, yeah, so that had one disengagement due to the highway uh, portion. I should make a note. It's like, I disengaged because the navigation doesn't go to the correct parking lot. But that's not something to do with full cell driving, and I'm not going to waste the, the labeler's time with that. If uh, everyone has this voice feature, when they get get it, I hope they do. I hope everyone gets this voice feature. Please, please, please don't waste the um, the labeler's time with like dumb comments. Be concise and descriptive as much as you're able to, of course, while driving. Obviously, it's harder when you're in the moment. But please do that. Like, don't don't waste their time. Don't make rude comments. Don't make sly, nasty comments. Like, oh, this is the worst software ever. Blah blah blah. Don't do that. Be a better human. And just be constructive. Like, hey, it didn't get over in the lane. This should have gotten over. That's all we need to say. That, that's, that's all we need to do. Yeah. So, everyone, I appreciate you watching. We'll be doing our next Hendersonville test after this. And then our Aldi test after that. Today, and maybe even a trailer test later this afternoon. Yes, Sonics. We're going to go on a hike, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, well, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.